my question again is, can you preach the good news? I'm going to show you the method that I use. I did this with you over a year ago, all right? And I'm going to do it again today. And I got my clicker, and I'm hoping it's going to work. I'm going to push the first time. There it is. Okay, perfect. All right. Now, for me, it's called, for me, no be do. That's my system. There are other systems. Find one. Work one. I'm going to share with you mine. I'm going to take you through a slideshow of a progression of understanding. And you can use your system and just refine it and figure it out and put it there and put it there and that's good. Whatever. Because what I'm saying, what someone else would say, what someone else would say from different ways of doing, we're all saying the same thing. Because it's the gospel of Jesus Christ. And my system is called no be do. You have to know something and then you be, you are, you become something and then you do something as a result of that. That's my system. That's how I like to share it and here we go. All right? When we're done, it's going to look like that. Okay, But here we start. The gospel of Jesus Christ. The gospel, gospel simply means good news. It's all the word means. You have a lot of different gospels about cooking, about farming, about athletics, whatever. Gospel. It just means good news. But when you think of Jesus Christ, there's some good news about Jesus Christ. And it is not that he taught certain things, though he did teach some wonderful things. That's not the gospel of Jesus Christ. The good news, the best news, the complete, the thing you really got to know about Jesus is, well, these things. So it really gets refined down, and you have to know something. In fact, you only really need to know two things in the gospel of Jesus Christ. You don't need to know, again, all of this. How much is in here? Aren't you glad you don't need to know all of this? We'll take the quiz and the test, and here we go, okay? And in about 20 years, we'll see if you're ready to pass the test, study for your test, and No, you don't need to know all of this. You really only need to know two things. Isn't that encouraging? See, you can tell this to somebody. Mrs. Morris told it to me. She didn't do no be do. She had a flannel graph. But these things came out, okay? She didn't have one of these either. But here we go. You have to know this. You have to know that that there is this thing called sin, and you're one of them. For all have sinned to fall short of the glory of God. I use that verse. And as a result of that, the wages of sin is death. You're separated from God because God is holy. How holy is God? 100% holy. Not kind of holy. He is totally holy in moral purity. And your sin has separated you from him. And you're looking at it going, that's a bad deal. That's a bummer. Yeah, that's kind of the bad news. That's the reality news, but it's kind of, ugh. If you never tell anybody that, oh, just do your best. You're good. God loves you. God is love. God is love. No. Be intolerant to the point of telling them You're a sinner and you're separated from God. Because if you don't know about your sin, you won't identify as Savior. And that's who Jesus Christ is. The second thing you need to know is Jesus Christ. That there is this person, this human, who actually is God. And God so loved the world, he gave his only son. He sent his son to earth to live life as a man in our condition, in our situation. He wasn't a sinner, did not have a sin nature, but Jesus Christ was sent And I put an exclamation point after that, and that reminds me that he never sinned. And that's mind-blowing. It's like, holy, wow. And he was known as the Lamb of God. The one that God has ordered and planned to do a great work. And what were lambs used for in these circumstances? A sacrifice. The blood sacrifice. And John the Baptist looked at Jesus and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Jesus was the Lamb. And people are going, God has a Lamb? God has a Lamb? Because we know about the millions of lambs that have gone on the last thousand plus years. But God has a Lamb? Man, if God has a Lamb, oh, oh man, could it mean? Could it be true? Yeah, it's true. God has a Lamb. And he died on the cross. He died. He was buried and he rose again. That is the most gracious thing. That is, the, that is the most glorious news. I like Christmas. God came in the form of a babe. I love Easter more. The resurrection. That solidifies. That's the, that's the, the end all be all of why we are allowed to have the faith and the hope and the confidence. See, so those are the things that you need to know. But then, just because you know those things... Well, now you got to be. It has to be for you. It has to be true for you. It has to become you. And the question of the ages is, well, how do I be? 
how do I get there? How, do I, how does it become true? Because just knowledge of these facts is not salvation. The demons know a whole lot of stuff. They're not safe. They know who Jesus is. They've interacted with him since the point of their creation. They saw the Trinity. And they knew who the second person of the Trinity is. So it's just not knowledge. You have to somehow get beyond that. And this is why I like the word over there, grace. This is Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. For by grace you have been saved. Look at the screen. By grace you've been saved through faith. This is not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Huh. And then we come across a whole bunch of Bible verses. You could probably know some. Romans 10 is one of them. If you confess with your mouth. Confess means simply to agree. It's true. I'm a sinner. I'm separated. Uh Uh-huh. Repent means to turn, to go a different direction, to acknowledge your sin and say, I'm going somewhere else. I, I, this isn't working. I have to repent. To believe, to express faith from your heart, to ask God to claim the work of Christ, to pray a prayer to God, to communicate to him. Humble yourself, not my works, nothing I have done, not a result of works. You do these things, that's it. That's what the Bible teaches. You just have to believe, right? That's what it said, right? salvation save from call and how do you call you got to believe well just believe believe what believe the things we've talked about believe you're a sinner and christ died for you this is the gospel this is the good news this is the preaching of it this is how you get beautiful feet is to know these things and if you do that it's done it's over you you are now a child of the king you've been adopted you've been born again And you could still be standing in the exact same spot. For me, I heard it. I I came to knowledge of what was required in Mrs. Morse's living room. And she then asked, would anyone like to pray the prayer? And I'm nine, nine years old going, yeah. Okay, yeah. Makes sense. It wasn't this huge, you know, tearful expression. No, I was nine. And I knew I was a sinner. Dwayne led me astray a couple times. I knew of this, all right? <laughs> and so I had, to, I had to deal with it. I knew about that. She said, then just follow me into the kitchen. And her helper was still in, with the living room, and I went into the kitchen, and there was someone else there too. I think it was a girl. I'm not even sure, but there were two of us that got up and went into her kitchen that day, and I prayed the prayer. And boom, I was born again. I was adopted into the king, into the, into the son of the king. It was done. It's over right there. Done. However, the scriptures teach that once that's true, something else comes true. And this is what I'm going to be talking about in James as we move on to the test number four is, right, is this issue here. But now because of that, there's a doing that is now required. Now the doing isn't to get it because I already put, I've already got it. <laughs> it's done. I've been saved. But if I'm saved, there's a doing that the scriptures speak of. And that deals with why would I do it? Because I love Christ. I love God. Thank you, God. You saved me. I'm a Christless eternity. I'm born again. Thank you. I love you. Would you like for me now to do something in my way of saying thanks to you? And God says, well, by the way, I I do. You're my son, so now live like my son. And here we go. And that's what the idea of works and fruit and obey and doing righteous things. Why? Not to get it. Because I love God. Because I want to say thank you to God. There's another system every other religion on the planet does not work this way we operate by grace we enjoy the grace the gift the faith every other religion says no they start with the word do if you do 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 all these things long list here it is some have a long list some have a longer list than others harder list different list whatever but if you do all this stuff here's the doing if you you can study the world religions you'll find this in every one of them if you do all this stuff, then you will become, be, you will become a certain type of person. You'll become a good person, a better person, a moral person, a reformed person, a person worthy of God's acknowledgement. And God's going to look down and say, oh, Donna, I see you working down there. Good job. Dean, really? That's it? No, I don't know. I mean, because he's going to pick and choose as to who's good, who's gooder, who's acceptable. That's why people all over the planet are trying to work and work and work and work and work and work to impress God. So they can have a relationship with God. They understand that there's something going on there. And then God will know them. Then they, then they can know God. 
If I do, I'll become a certain type of person, and then I can know God. Oh, this would be great. No. For by grace you have been saved through faith. This is not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one can boast. 100% Jesus. His work, his perfect sacrifice, and you don't get to add anything to it. It wasn't 99% Jesus and 1% you. It was all the work and the gift of God because that was the situation we were in. We couldn't redeem ourselves. We're sinners. And so it took the complete work of Christ. There it is. 